And it was about that time when this was just something I was tinkering around with. And yes, I was pushing a few companies and I was in conversations with a number of them. But this was my toy project. It really wasn't a sanctioned company uh, endeavor on that. Uh, because it's not at all clear how in software Zenimax monetizes a hand mount display thing on there. But when we decided to do the Doom 3 BFG reissue on here, most of my work was just making it run fast on the consoles, getting it up to 60 frames per second, on, which was more trouble than you'd think for an eight-year-old game. An eight-year-old PC game is still demanding on current-gen consoles in many ways. So lots of my effort on there. But then the thought was, how do you get people to give a damn about an eight-year-old game? And thinking, well, I've done all this stuff with stereoscopy and uh, head-mounted displays. Microsoft and Sony are both pitching HDMI 3D support on there. And I've done a good job, it's been, you know, better than most on the 3D TV support on there. But the really neat thing is the head-mounted display work on here. And uh, so we got some kind of legitimization for my hobby project here. It's like, okay, I can actually spend some real time yeah, during working this. hours on uh, on this project because we're going to use it as a promotional device for, uh, for Doom. Uh, and as I'm rolling on building, I've got five half-disassembled homebrew different head mounts on there. The direction I was heading towards was I can do all this software distortion on things. Instead of using fancy optics, use cheap optics and pre-distort correct for it in software. And I was heading down this path, I was playing with laser projectors and building some other things, when I ran into uh, this guy Palmer Lucky, who has, uh, he's got his own incredible collection of head mounts, but he's been building this side, uh, he's built a number of things, but he currently had this uh, one prototype that had 90 degree, it's 110 degree vertical field of view, 90 degrees horizontally, and it's huge. It is block out the whole world on this. And he just sent, you know, he sent his prototype to me, just I had, you know, no questions asked on there. And I took it, and you look at it normally, and everything's fisheye distorted. It's cool that it covers your whole world, but you look at something normal, and it's weird because it's distorted. So I went in, and in my R&D test bed initially, mapped the distortion and figured out a correction that I could pre-distort the images coming out to map that so that once the lens is pre-distorted, it comes out nice and square the way you want it to. And then I was able to spend time actually making the game cool in 3D, where most of the times when you do head mount demos, they're hacked in so it pretends it's a mouse and you do this and you don't have any of the you know, look around like this. It's not 90 degrees is 90 degrees and it's compressed. All the, the stuff that's not very good. But I've actually done a, a good job in this of it accurately represents the world. I you can control the, you know, you can bring the weapon up or down independent of your view. Because that's one of the other things. If you pack it in as a mouse, you have to aim with your neck like this. Where now it's got more of an actual feel and you can aim it like a console game while still looking up or down independently on there. Do you, do you sacrifice wanting to you know, uh, lose a lot of the processing speed in order to, to fulfill? We actually have far more processing speed than we have pixels on this, where this is low resolution. It's a, it's a 1280 by 800 panel split between the eyes. So that means you've only got 640 by 800 per eye, and it's stretched over this enormous view. So you can actually see pixels on there. But that's changing whether we want to. We have so many key companies working on high-end 1080p displays for cell phones and mini tablets. Any, any time now, we'll be able to source a 1080p display. And like Toshiba's been demoing this 2.5K display that's the perfect size for this, which is of course amazing. It's your 30 inch monitor compressed down to six inches on there. And that will be ideal for this. But as it stands right now, yeah, we have far more processing power than we need to render this. So we rendered it in good anti-aliasing. And in my, my test bed, I'm, I actually do massive oversampling and all this other stuff. The Doom 3 version it doesn't go quite that far in there, but we have a sort of bit of processing and GPU power. Uh, we're more limited by the sensors and the display. So what I've got now is, I honestly think the best VR demo probably the world's ever seen, because I've seen a lot of bad VR demos. Maybe hidden in some NASA lab, there's something cooler than this, but I haven't seen it. Uh, the limitations on this are the, the resolution's not great. Uh, only about 30 people have seen this, and a few of them have complained that it's blurry. It's blurry, and I'm not sure if they mean that it's low resolution or if there's an optical problem where some people don't see 3D TVs right. We have low sample numbers on this, so a couple people have not been able to, to really get it on there. But most people, they get into it, it seems intuitive enough on the aiming, and if you play halfway through the level where you start getting monsters coming out of tunnels chasing around after you, and you don't see any of the world around you, it's really pretty cool. 
The other limitation is that it's an attitude-only sensor, where it senses orientation. Uh, it does not sense if you like if you sway side to side. So when you do anything like that, the world's not reacting the way you'd expect. I have other sensors that can give me some of that, but I can't. I haven't quite got that productized to the point that I can do this. So I, you know, swaying side to side does not react naturally. There's a certain way that I map a head neck model. So instead of being a disembodied eyeball, I've got it on a pivot point here where it moves around a little bit. So you get some sense of parallax, yeah. but it's only right for a certain type of body lean. You know, if you do this or if you do this, it's not going to respond exactly correctly. Uh, if you do a lot of really crazy head swinging, the gyros may get a little bit drifted off. You can just pause and it, you know, it'll pull itself back over. But uh, other than that, you play, have you played the game outside? Just the regular? No, 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 not yet. Oh, that's unfortunate because yeah. I... Don't worry. Yeah. It's better if you do that first because then you have some sense of what you're doing. But I'll, I'll give you the quick run and put you in god mode on this. Uh, because you can't see the controller. You have to kind of know it by feel because your world is blocked out. But let me go ahead and set this up for okay. you on here.